Okay, now we're going to introduce standard scores or z-scores. You're often not going to have data values that are exactly one, two, or three standard deviations away from the mean. So we introduce a concept called a z-score to find the, the exact number of standard deviation deviations a data value is away from the mean. So, so what we'll do, we'll have what's, what's called a standard normal distribution. Now, the standard normal di distribution, the mean is zero. The standard deviation is one. All right, and to find a z-score, if the z-score is positive, we say it's above the mean. If the z-score is negative, we say it's below the mean. Now, this formula is z equals x in this case is your data value mu again is your mean sigma is your standard deviation so if you're using a calculator make sure especially if it doesn't have a fraction key uh, that you put your numerator in parentheses okay if not your answer will be incorrect in most cases so let's look at an, at an example. Okay, so notice uh, we've dealt with this problem. The mean is 510. The standard deviation or sigma is 95. And we want to see what's the standard score for a student who scores 365 on this particular standardized test. So you build your curve, your mean is 595, I mean 510, you add 95, one standard deviation is 605, 700, two standard deviations, 795, three standard deviations above, okay? Below, so 510 minus 95, It's 415. 415 minus 95 is 320. 320 minus 95 is 225. Okay, so if we want to find the standard score, we go Z equals the data value is 365. The mean is 510. The standard deviation is 95. Okay. So now before I even begin, I can plot. I know 365 is somewhere in here. Okay. So I know it's to the left. Okay. So my z-score should be negative because if this 510 is my mean, 365 is to the left. So the z-score, or negative z-score, remember, that's to, to the left or below the mean. Okay, so what we do is we take 365 minus 510. We divide it by 95. And we get a z-score of negative 1 point. Let's go two decimal places. Five, three. And that simply tells us that that score of 365 is 1.53 standard deviations below the mean. Okay? So, real simple formula. You can draw your curve, and then that'll help you interpret the value of your z score or standard score. And so this next one, we got to do a little bit of algebra here. Same exact scale, but in this case, suppose a student's z-score was 2.2. We want to know what that student scored on this exam. So again, 510, 605, one standard deviation above, two standard deviations above is 700, three standard deviations above is 795. Below, we have, I guess that's, four, 
415, 320, 225. Okay, so now from the very beginning, they told me the z-score was was 2.2. Okay, so I draw that and I say, okay, this is one standard deviation. This is two standard deviations above. At 795, that's three standard deviations above. So that score should fall somewhere between 700 and 795. So again, we know the z-score, so take our formula and we say, okay, 2.2 equals your x minus your mean, which was 510, and our standard deviation was 95. All right, so we're going to do a little bit of algebra. 2.2 times 95 equals 209 equals x minus 510. And all we did was we multiplied both sides of the equation by 95. Okay, so these 95s cancel. All right, last step, we're going to add 510 to both sides of the equation. And we end up with a test score of 719. And again, since we drew the curve, that makes perfect sense. We're in the range. We know we're above 700, but we're below 795. So that's how you interpret, find and interpret z-scores for data values on a, on a standard normal distribution or on a normal distribution. I hope this helps.